arrival mentality. The inability to continue learning. The inability to continue improving. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Arrival mentality. What is there to know again? What is there to learn again? What is there to pray about again? I have received the highest award. Do you know that it is often said that for most graduates, as soon as they graduate, their mental capacity starts declining because the pressure to learn is no longer there. And they literally stop growing mentally. If any man think that he knoweth anything, the Bible says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. You really know real champions because they always carry an unassuming personality, ever open to learn. The man is a professor, but he's listening to you. And even though what you are saying may not make sense, he's still listening with an open heart. One of the ways you know great people who will last is their passion to keep learning. They learn from the great, they learn from the small, they learn from colleagues, they learn from superiors, they learn from subordinates, they remain, they, they are students for life. The school of wisdom is a school where you never graduate, you are only admitted. The day you graduate, you graduate into failure. Arrival mentality. The level of light, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to excel in life and destiny, I submit to you by the integrity of scripture, there are very few people who have accessed that level of light. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people who have excelled notably in their fields of endeavor. And sometimes you will be amazed at the level of intellectual investment they have made and that they keep making. Whether it's in sports, whether it's in music, whether it's in ministry, you know, and so on and so forth. Sometimes when I'm studying, I get these very sincere text messages from people. Oh, Apostle, thank you for transforming us and doing this. And then I just look at it and, and I smile. I'm grateful on one hand. And then I just look at my Bible face forward and I continue reading. Because I have taught you, nobody claps for you twice for doing the same thing. Once you receive the applause for a level of result, that is it. If you don't grow, you will not receive any applause again. Arrival mentality. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Once upon a time, owning a typewriter was a breakthrough. If you own a typewriter, it was proof that you had made it. But today you can pack typewriters and give someone. And the person will insult you and return it back to you. How about Nokia 3310? If I package it and give it to you today, I say with love from me. You will accept, I tell you, it's a prophetic message that you will start hearing God. Otherwise, you most likely may be angry. Apostle, you mean, did I offend you? Why will you give me this? But once upon a time, it was a people stole to get it. People lied to get it. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Or today's excellence, in fact. So you need to be careful that you got an award yesterday does not mean you will get an award tomorrow. Our world is full of people who live in their yesterday. Their arrival mentality kept them there while the world was moving forward. And when you talk, they start giving you stories of yesteryears. I once was the most brilliant person. Are you now? I once was the most intelligent person. Are you now? Those days, I was the one who interpreted for T.L. Osborne. What happened to you now? Celebrating yesterday at the expense of the impact and the exploits of today is a disaster. Your yesterday should never be better than your today. If I give you stories only of yesterday, as though God is not working today, something is wrong. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it yesterday, where did you keep him that your result is no longer happening again? 
I used to pray for the sick yesterday. Thank God for what is happening now. There are still sick people today. I used to teach yesterday. Ah, Job said, oh, that I was in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. Can I tell you, may you never lack testimonies that the only thing you have is yesterday's results. I'm saying it again. May you never lack testimonies that you cannot tell people what God is doing in and through your life today. The only thing you have to say are the things that happened yesterday. I was rich. I was anointed. I was blessed. I was serious. No. Arrival mentality. Champions never arrive. They are aware that there is always more. You see and know the character of a champion by their passion to know more. I am I'm passionate about knowing the things and the areas of my ignorance. And when I find an area that I don't know anything about, I don't spare. I don't pity myself because of fatigue. I must drive that ignorance as soon as possible. There is something we call in our world a local champion mentality. Have you heard that kind of thing? Where in a small group of mediocres, you are the highest, perhaps the wisest, perhaps the most enlightened. And this cancer of local champion mentality has destroyed preachers, destroyed business people, destroyed great people. Arrival mentality. Oh, turn to the book of this and the man is watching. What? I already know it, I'm sure. With this way he's going with this revelation, he must talk about first call. You just watch and see. The person who is talking has never healed anybody. Nobody knows you. No influence, no power, no grace. You are failed in almost every area of your life. And mostly those who fail are the ones who are the commentators of destiny. They can comment. They can comment. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Have you seen a group of billionaires or millionaires sitting together? And with all due respect, someone who just shows up in their midst and sits down there and they are asking somebody a question that this our man has no idea about. And he will not let the people who have results answer. While they are talking, he said, well, uh, I don't agree with that exactly. What are you saying? What have you had? <laughs> you, you see how people disgrace themselves in destiny? People are talking about the anointing. And someone who has no understanding of the dynamics of the anointing is editing and complaining and say, well, it's not exactly like that. <laughs> and then those who really have the anointing are saying, okay, uh, we're listening. And you are just saying rubbish and confusing yourself and making a fool out of your destiny. Then when it is time to make it happen, usually they step back. May you never be ashamed. Say amen. May you never be ashamed. Amen. I rebuke from your life an arrival mentality. Amen. Listen, always have the heart of a learner. I'm teaching you how to last. Who would imagine that the word incarnate, the logos of God at age 12 will humble himself and go to the temple to learn what? From people he created? And without him was not anything made that was made. But when he became a man by himself, he went to the temple. I'm sure he would sit down there and then the Pharisees would be teaching him. There was this one that appeared to Moses and you'll be saying, wow, tell me more about it. So when the light appeared, he said, I am that I am. And the I am himself is listening and nodding his head. What humility is greater than that? If God can sit down to learn as a man, anybody that refuses to sit down and learn, you have pegged your potential for growth. Hallelujah. Champions learn. They learn all the time. They learn with their hearts opened. 
they learn with their hearts opened. You know that the, a man is going to last in life and destiny because of their passion to learn. Hallelujah. One day, someone gave me a book. Not, not, I think maybe just, I don't know if it's a, I think it's some lady wrote one book and just put it as a gift among the gifts they gave me. And, and I opened it and looked at the book. And to be honest with you, it was something I didn't seem to pay attention to, but the topic caught my attention. And I just said, wow, this is interesting. Turned to the back, read about the person, and I just opened just one small chapter and read just one line. And I was so blessed, so blessed by what that lady, I just read that part alone and then I kept it, but I was blessed. I remember one time, I think I was looking for a particular, I was just researching on a particular topic, true story. And then I saw a, a video, maybe like five, ten minutes on YouTube. I don't even know the person. And the entire, I'm not sure that it was up to maybe 30 or 40, what do you call that thing? Whether likes or follows. You know, the people listening to him. And then I listened to what the gentleman was saying. And my God, it was five minutes of profound wisdom. Yet nobody was listening. I said, this gentleman now may have known about me and never know that I am part of those who have benefited from him. I'm sure he'll be praying and say, oh God, let me meet this man one day. Not knowing that the man you are praying to meet listened to your five minutes video and was blessed by it. Some of you will never admit it. That you are a big man and say, no, I learned from a little child. Ah, that is a, that is a, an, a sting to your ego. You say, no, I received it from heaven. What is there to say you just land? Does it take away your anointing? Where did you learn how to cook this nice meal? You know, I have my thing with God. Tell the truth. There is nothing to be embarrassed about, ladies and gentlemen. I went to someone's house and saw, you may say, I saw them cook rice in a way I've never known. I asked a polite question, they taught me, period. Glory be to God, honor to the saints. What is the lie about? An unnecessary expensive lie. Say amen. amen. Arrival mentality. You must fight it. You must fight it. It is the cancer of great men. It is easy to study when you have not become. It is easy to study when men do not know you. But when you get to a point where your results are clear and obvious, can you sit down and listen to someone you trained and learn from him? It is one of the biggest disasters of men of God. If I'm not preaching and I sit down, there are times I go to preach in meetings and perhaps there might be a number of preachers, some preaching before me and after me. If I have the time, it doesn't matter whether I train the person, whether we are colleagues, whether it's a father, it doesn't matter. Once the word of God is coming or any platform to dispense wisdom, I listen to it carefully. If there's nothing I can learn, glory be to God. At least I did not waste my time. Are we learning? An arrival mentality. When you find what you do not know, humble yourself and learn. Humble yourself and learn. Humble yourself and learn. Reject an arrival mentality so that the word Ichabod would never be used over your life and your destiny. No. And I have taught you that everywhere you see greatness, respect it. When you see greatness, especially when you have access to it, respect it. If I have the honor of meeting any of our fathers of faith, the short time for discussion, that is not the time to start making any contributions. No. It doesn't mean I'm a dummy. There are things I know. But then I keep quiet because there are many things I do not know. And you use the opportunity and ask questions. Many of you would have been wiser if you did not waste your time. Have you seen people who come for counseling? And for 15 minutes they are teaching you they sit down and say, well, I want to tell, you, there's a way God works with me. So here's how it works. Eh? Every time, January, February, he speaks to me. So God told me, and so you are, why are you here? You are wasting my time. You are wasting the time of other people. If you are not here to listen and learn. And meanwhile, while they are saying all that thing, you have x-rayed them by the spirit. You have found them wanting on many grounds. And yet they will not listen. 
Then at the end, they say, well, I just felt it in my spirit. It always comes once in a while to agree with me. Agree with you, leave this place. You are not ready to receive. Not ready to receive. You are in trouble. You are owing. You are in debt. You are confused. You are oppressed and you are saying agree with you. What is there to agree about? Koinonia, are you learning? Arrival mentality. Always give yourself to continuous learning. First Timothy chapter 4, 15 and 16. First Timothy 4, 15 and 16. Meditate upon these things, the Bible says. Give yourself wholly, not half-heartedly, wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. Verse 16, take heed unto yourself and to doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you shall save both yourself and them that hear you. May I never get to a point as a man of God where I feel I've arrived. I've known all the mysteries. I've known everything it takes. No. The victor's path, the champion's path, is the path of continuous learning. Don't just learn from fathers. Don't just learn from contemporaries. Also learn when it has to do with knowledge. Nobody has monopoly of it. Did you hear what I'm saying? Nobody has monopoly of knowledge. There are things only fathers can teach. There are things it is those under you. One day, you will be listening to a, a program, something from someone, perhaps someone you raised, and you will hear the person communicate a dimension of truth in an interesting way. And that becomes what ushers you to study. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord.